How do thoughts turn to things? This is the question that we want you to ponder. How is it that what's in your life is there? How did you set the tone that is matching you up with the things that you're matching up to? Because it didn't just happen. You emanated a vibration that brought it about. Now we'll go along with you that you didn't see it coming. Maybe sometimes the things you don't want. And we'll even go along with you that you don't deserve it in that it's not really who you really are. But nothing comes to you that you are not a vibrational match to. So if things are coming that you don't like, you have to first accept your vibrational match to them. And then you have to do something about what you're matching, which means you've got to stop observing what it is that's coming because it just keeps it coming. So by being a selective sifter, we're in some ways setting you up for a little bit of failure also, because now we're saying, observe conditions and look for the good ones. But when we say observe conditions and look for the good ones, you're mostly just observing conditions. And sometimes you find good ones and sometimes you find bad ones, but you're training yourself to respond or react to the conditions. Are you with us? Where if you've decided that you're going to be an unconditional aligner, an unconditional lover, then what you say to the whole world for just a little while is you are what you are, but I'm going to do my best to ignore you. I'm going to take my attention from the existing conditions, which isn't easy. And most people would tell you you're crazy to even try. You can't take your attention from something. You have to give your attention to something else. So you have to decide. I'm going to give my attention to things that really feel good. And for a while, just for a while, just for a while, serve yourself obnoxiously and abnormally and to the chagrin of everyone around you. <laughs> Do the things that cause you to feel best. Take those walks that you've not been taking because you've been sacrificing yourself and doing the laundry instead. Go to the things that feel good to you. Do the things that feel the best to you just for a little while. Give yourself a chance to let your cork float because once it floats, all the good ideas will start flowing and the universe will start cooperating with all the things that you want. But you've got to find some way, maybe just going cold Turkey is the answer. We could just all run away together <laughs> just for a little while and just do fun things. And maybe this three hours that we're together will be enough for that. In other words, focus in a way that allows your vibration to raise. But you have to find some way of breaking the cycle of, and we so appreciated this conversation because you're demonstrating what almost everyone is living. You think you're doing this, but then it feels like this. And we want you to just acknowledge that however it feels is how it is. And how it is, is how it's going to keep being. So you've got to find some way of changing the feeling. And the way to change the feeling is to acknowledge that. Do you know that when you sleep at night, your momentum stops? So when you wake up in the morning, you have the best opportunity to get into a different vibrational place. And that if you will just wake up and as soon as you wake up, begin looking for things or acknowledging things or thinking thoughts that do feel good, you have a better chance of getting further into the day about that, you see? We want you to not work so hard at trying to orchestrate this and instead take the conversation of art of allowing to its true meaning and allow yourself, allow your cork to float. That's what we would like you to leave this gathering determined to do. And when somebody says to you, why didn't you do such and such? Say to them, because I'm allowing my cork to float. <laughs> And they'll say, what's that got to do with you not getting such and such done? And you say, has everything to do with that. I'm allowing my cork to float. I'm just giving myself a little opportunity to allow my cork to float. And maybe you want to do like we're encouraging Esther to do. Understand, don't try to explain. You understand it. You understand it. What are you doing? I'm allowing my cork to float. What does that mean? That means I'm taking a walk. It means I'm taking a bath. It means I'm doing anything and everything that I can think of doing that makes my heart sing just a little more and a little more and a little more and a little more. And before you know it, you'll be on the other side of this where people will be watching you and they will be amazed at how cooperative the universe is with you. 
And they will say, what's with you? Why does everything always work out for you? And you'll just smile. Don't say it. <laughs> just smile. Because I allowed my cork to float. <laughs> well, how come you get all the good jobs? Because I allow my cork to float. How come everybody loves you? Because I allow my cork to float. How come you have so much money? Because I allow my cork to float. How come everything always works out for you? Because I allow my cork to float. Don't say it out loud to them. Just understand it. Just understand it. We think this is a really good time for a segment. Thank you so much. Thank you for bringing me up. <laughs> if I wanted to kind of build on that and ask about what is the role of self-worthiness and how that affects everything that we may be experiencing. It affects everything. Because how you feel is your point of attraction. And what comes to you can't get around how you feel. Even though you're asking, if you don't feel worthy, it's like you've got an umbrella up that's shielding it. So even though inspiration and ideas and all kinds of opportunities are flowing, you're kind of shielding yourself from them and not letting them in. But we want to explain worthiness to you in a way that you haven't thought of before. And in a way that is exactly the way that it is. And it's going to serve several purposes all at the same time. So just relax. This is going to make so much sense to you. So we've been explaining to you that you were source energy before you came into this physical body. Blah, 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 blah. You've heard it so many times. And that a part of you has come into this body and you're sifting and sorting and coming to your own personal decisions and preferences and conclusions about things. And you're shooting these rockets of desires into this vibrational reality and law of attraction and your inner being are gathering all those cooperative components. And so your wonderful life is gestating and becoming and getting ripe and ready for you to receive it. But at the same time that all of the things that you want relative to your life, your finances, your relationships, everything, at the same time that it's growing and getting ready for you, you must be vibrationally growing and getting ready for it. You can't be discouraged and be in the receptive mode of all of this wonderment that you have created. So as you hear us and play more and are nicer to yourself and meditate more and get good sleep and treat yourself well and look for positive aspects and feel good more and more and more of the time so that you're commonly in what we are calling that receptive mode then ideas occur to you and your timing is really good and you find yourself often living in that sweet spot where something will occur to you and you will see quite readily the results of your being tuned in Nothing gives you a greater sense of worthiness or well-being than to watch the universe knocking itself out to accommodate the things that you have asked for. But if you don't know how the laws of the universe work, so you're just sort of stumbling into happiness or stumbling into thought and you're not doing it purposefully, then you often don't make the important association between the thoughts that you were thinking and the emotion that you were deliberately conjuring and the results of all of that but when you went to bed at night and you deliberately said I'm gonna sleep well and I'm gonna rest well and I love my sweet body and I'm thankful for this life experience and tomorrow when I wake up it's gonna be a whole new day with a fresh start and then you wake up and you breathe deeply and you feel glad for the day and then you deliberately look for positive aspects and you tune yourself to the frequency of who you really are. And then you take it further by listening to one of the meditation CDs or deliberately doing something to tune yourself. And then you pay attention to the way you feel. And here's the newest piece that we've been giving you. You know how when you're driving, you have a sense of how to stay where you need to be. You don't try to occupy the same space that another vehicle is occupying. And when you feel the rumble strip, under your right wheels you don't deliberately just drive off into the bar pit you align yourself back into your lane you do it intuitively and wisely and so now you've awakened you feel good and you're deliberately staying in your lane when a negative thought begins to come into your awareness you recognize the rumble strip and you get back in your lane you do it before the momentum of it takes you into a place that you don't want to be and so now you are so often tuned in, tapped in, turned on. And you now are the witness of the universe yielding to you. And because you're in the receptive mode, 
You get the hint, you feel the impulse, you say the words, and not only does it move you steadily toward the things you want, it holds you constantly in a state of feeling your empowerment of knowing your value. And that is our definition of worthiness. It's feeling the entire universe cooperating with you. It's not being in need and then the bad lifting up off of you. That can't even happen. It's you deliberately understanding the laws and understanding your guidance and staying in your lane and guiding yourself deliberately. When you feel that rumble strip, if you ignore it, now all four wheels are on the other side of it. And now two of the wheels are off in the grass and now the grass has you in the mud and now you're spinning and skidding and now you're off the bridge, you're off the cliff and now you need a whole new body and it takes time. You see, where if you're paying attention to the rumble strip which is the way we're describing negative emotion and when you feel it you don't condemn yourself you understand it you use it as a guidance that it is then oh you stay in that sweet spot and really that's our definition of worthiness is consciously and deliberately guiding thought in order to be a steady receiver of the well-being that source is showering down all around you and if you're not doing that there's not enough words in the world to make you feel worthy because words don't teach. We can tell you all day, every day that you are, but unless you're letting yourself be the benefit of your connection to those resources, you don't feel it. And so, for something more. Also, I just want to say about a month ago when I was purchasing the tickets for this, I said that I was going to be called up on stage in the right time for this discussion on worthiness. And you just helped me make that connection of my power again. So thank you. There it is.